Hi, I'm Mateus de Campos. I teach New Testament at Gordon-Conwell Theological Seminary at our Hamilton campus. One of my favorite courses to teach is Exegesis of the Gospel of Mark. The reason for that is that uh, I've had many incredible experiences with this gospel throughout the years. I uh, grew up uh, in a Christian home and I even served as a pastor uh, for a number of years in Brazil. But when I had the opportunity to dive deeper into the Gospel of Mark, uh, I had some profound encounters with Jesus and a really renewed understanding of what it means to be his follower. Um, Mark is an incredible account of uh, Jesus' life, death, uh, and resurrection. Uh, it's the first time that story is being told. Mark is the earliest gospel. But the interesting thing is that Mark is not just telling the story for historical purposes. This is also a theological account. This is the first time the early church, represented in Mark the Evangelist, is making sense of the Christ event and appropriating the significance of that event to their own lives. Uh, at a moment in history when uh, they are really in the, in the formative years of the church, so we're talking about a time when people are thinking through the question of what it means to be a disciple, what it means to be a Christian in, a, in an antagonistic society. And this is really a, an account that forms sort of a textbook for discipleship. It's an interesting story. The way Mark chooses to tell the story is very peculiar. Jesus goes through Galilee and the uh, areas around Galilee uh, doing these wonderful, mighty deeds, things that only the God of Israel can do. But although people um, uh, react with amazement and wonder, there is this constant tone of incomprehension and doubt that populates the entire narrative. People asking questions like, why is he saying these things? Only God can forgive sins. Or who is this man that even the sea and the wind obey him? Or what, where does he, his authority come from? Isn't he just the son of the, the carpenter? So people are struggling to make sense of Jesus. But at the same time, and perhaps even more peculiar, is the fact that the disciples themselves, those who are walking with Jesus, those who are listening to his uh, teachings firsthand, they also struggle. They also fail. So much so that uh, Mark uh, qualifies that incomprehension with the phrase hardness of hearts. Their hearts were hardened. They can't understand Jesus' identity. They can't understand his parables, his teachings. And even the cruciform nature of his ministry, the realities of suffering and servanthood that are inbuilt in his, uh, in, in his mission, they resist and avoid. Now, if this is the earliest account of Jesus and the Twelve, why tell the story in a way that highlights the failure of those who would be later the pillars of the church? Why tell the story in this way? Well, two reasons. First, that's really what happened. The disciples had initially a, a profound difficulty understanding Jesus. But also, their narrative... It's not just the narrative of the 12 historical disciples, it's the narrative of discipleship. The struggles of the, of the 12 mirror the struggles of the early community in Rome to which Mark is writing his uh, gospel. And it also mirrors the narrative of every disciple of Jesus Christ. This is not just the story of Jesus and the 12, it's my story with Jesus, it's your story with Jesus. So understanding and exploring the, the, the ways in which Jesus forms this community and the ways this, this group of people fail to understand him uh, will help us to understand our, the dynamics of our own relationship with Jesus Christ. The question that Jesus asked the disciples in chapter 8 is the question he asks each one of us, who do you say that I am? Who do you say that I am? The answer to that question is what makes us disciples of Jesus Christ. And it is my pleasure to walk 
with students through this narrative, asking precisely those kinds of questions. I invite you to join us, and I hope this will be as transformative for you as it has been for me. May the Lord bless you.